crafting download. I have amassed quite a selection of digital images and I found some free sites to download, you know, different graphics. Um, there is the Crafters Companion website. They have a lot and I found some on Create and Craft and then also a website called Tattered Lace, and they're all out of the UK. So what I've got open on the screen right now is a PDF file, and I don't mean to geek out on anybody too much or um, whatever, but this, this episode is definitely going to be for people that want to do, I would call it advanced is one of the images that I've downloaded from, I believe, Tattered Lace, and I'll have the link um, in the description video. And when you download their files, they come in a format with the PDF on the end. I'm trying to highlight it there. PDF. And if you use a Cricut, you'll know that your Cricut won't import a PDF. I'm also creating a library with all of my digital files and I need to convert these to a JPEG, otherwise I can't see them in my Lightroom program. Okay, this is my Lightroom program. Let me make it a little smaller so it'll fit on the screen here. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Lightroom or Photoshop or any of that kind of stuff. Um, familiar with both Photoshop and Lightroom so I've adapted them to use for my digital content you can see I have everything from what I would call digital stamps that's these little black and white hand-drawn images to you know full color graphics yes. yeah. I'm thinking I want to cut out the background using my Cricut so I need to think about what kind of file type that needs to be and how to prepare the file or is it something I just want to print out and color like this super cute little piggy design with the macarons? Don't even know where I got this from. Could be one of those um, coloring sheets or something like that. But this is why I want to create a visual catalog so I can select all my images that I would call digital stamps, put those all together. Um, and then more of like my graphics. I can put all of my graphics together so I can find them. So that's why I want to use Lightroom. So this is the Lightroom program. And you do have to import your images into Lightroom. And Lightroom will not take a PDF. It is a intended to be a photo type program, so it will not take a PDF. And most of the images that I'm downloading um, and using, I'm noticing they're all PDF images. So if you don't have a visual catalog and you're trying to find your files, you'll kind of see what I have on my screen right now, which is just all of your file folders, okay? I do have some file folders that are actually PNGs. They happen to download. That way they're from like actual graphic sites. So I have a file folder full of PNGs, but as you can tell, it is really hard to find things when you have to click and open and click and open and click and open versus saying to yourself, well, I know I've got a whole bunch of cute stuff that I downloaded from this one company. How can I just find it? So the one I'm going to be working on today is from the website Tattered Lace. And I'm just choosing this Mother's Day file because I haven't worked on it yet. And I clicked on it and I'm going to choose to open it with photo, uh, Adobe Photoshop. Now, there happens to be 21 pages and I'm not going to be opening them all for the purpose of this tutorial. And I'm also going to set a timer here for 15 minutes. I've got that started 
because I will geek talk your ear off. So I'm just selecting some of these images because I can tell um, I might want some of these as actual background paper because they are really cute. Um, so I've just got one, two, well, let's select three there. Let's select one, six, seven. I'm just holding down the command button on my keyboard. And I believe these are, these may be just different colorways of the same, um, design. So I'm just clicking on those and that one, just, just so we get a good smattering or a good selection of different things available. Again, the couple of things that's going through my head is what I'm gonna do with it. Am I gonna cut it in my Cricut? Am I just gonna print it out, kind of like, you know, digital scrapbook paper on my printer and use it that way? So this image that's open right now, I see a lot of white background. I see really cute, like, I would call them like tags or layering elements. And this would be something I would want to possibly print and cut with my Cricut. So I just wouldn't have to take the time and scissors and do each individual item. When I see an image like this, I want to think about how to get rid of the white background part. So when I take this into my Cricut and use it as a print and cut image, my machine will pretty much do all the cutting for me. So there's a couple of ways to get rid of the backgrounds. I'm gonna mainly be focusing all the way to the left hand of the screen. We've got the quick selection tool and we have the magnetic lasso tool. Um, I've been doing this for a few, well an hour or so here tonight before I started to record and those seem to be the best um, tools that I found. I'm checking my timer right here because I wanna make sure that I'm not just yammering along. Um, I'm going to be selecting this, I'm going to try the object selection tool. So that's just the one that I chose and I'm dragging my mouse. So I click, hold and drag over the image and I'm going to see what happens. Okay, it did a fairly good job. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see it. I've heard these selections referred to as dancing ants. <laughs> Go figure, I got nothing for you. So I changed my brush over here. You, you can absolutely do that. You don't have to stick with, with one brush. I wanna add that to the selection. So I changed my brush and I just started painting it in because I want that line or the dancing ants to be nice and solid all the way to the edge. Now it selected too much, so I went up to my minus part of my brush and took it out. So now we're gonna add. I selected the adding part and I'm just gonna kinda drag and drop. Now the computer does take a minute. There we go, I let go. And now it's actually reading that and I'm pretty happy with that. Something you can do, layer, new layer via copy, okay? So there's just one image. I can absolutely save it like that um, and just do one image at a time. I can duplicate it, make a whole entire sheet of that. Um, there's quite a bit of advanced crafting you can do. So I now have multiple layers over here. I'm gonna go back down to my original layer, which is on the bottom, and I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to select it. I was pretty happy with that object selection tool. So I just dropped and dragged it. Let's see, oh, it didn't do such a great job this time. So I'm gonna back that step up. I'm just gonna click over here in my history palette. It's something I personally use a lot. Um, I actually am a photographer. That is my trade. That is what I do. If you're watching this in June of 2020 during the COVID epidemic, I am home right now because I do baby photography in the hospitals and right now we are not allowed to be in there. So I am using all of my Photoshop geeking skills for crafting. All right, so what I did is I just selected that. Um, basically it's like a click and a drop and that looks really, really good. I'm really happy with my edge right there. 
I'm going to gamble a little bit and try to do the next one. I'm just holding my mouse button down. It's my left mouse button. I do actually use a trackball. Um, if you're doing any kind of graphics, I would definitely recommend a trackball. Layer, new layer via copy. Okay, so I have one layer that has one thing on it, another layer that has two things on it, which is fine. Again, you, you can save it like that. I'm going to go down here. I'm back on my original layer. I'm going to select this next line, just so I have three. Oh, I think it'll be more complicated. I like this middle one better than that. You are my sunshine. Boy, I got really sloppy right there. I'm talking and not working at the same time. Let me, I just, I'm cleaning this up. That's, that's all I'm doing. A lot of people think Photoshop, oh, it's one click and you can just like retouch my whole entire image. Not so much. But it is a great program. Okay, so I want to clean up this white. I'm going to lean, keep focused on what you're doing. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay clean up that little bit right there. And you know, some colors, some images, different brushes and selection tools do better. Layer, new layer, copy, there we go. Now I've got that one in there here. I'll turn off the back so you can see it. There it is. All right, I'm gonna get complicated again. I selected the back layer. I want one of these funky images just, just cause I want you to see um, what I'm doing and how you can, ooh boy, we got a big white spot right there. Ooh, I didn't see that right away. Again, the computer can really only, you know, read what it can read and it doesn't know what to do with the white. So that's actually fairly good. I'm going to go in, select, you know what, select, I'm going to go and select this image instead. Oops, layer via copy, quick selection. All right, I went back in my history brush and just restarted for some reason. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Layer via copy, go back to the bottom layer. Okay, start over. Boy, it's still going there. I don't want it to go there. Okay. Ah, start a new one. Oh, Photoshop can be fudgy sometimes. Okay, so I am selecting this. Did you see how I did that? I'm just kind of dropping and holding. I do prefer a trackball versus a mouse. If I had a mouse, my hand would be sliding all over my table. Whereas if I have a trackball, my thumb is just making some micro adjustments. Okay, there we go, I got it selected. Layer, new layer, via copy. Okay, um, so there is pretty much everything we selected. Let me zoom out. And I'm just going to save this just for the sake of a simpler tutorial. So I'm going to select all the layers that are showing. This bottom layer is not showing. I'm click, uh, hitting shift, selecting all those. I'm going to merge them. And the only thing my computer sees now are these images that are here. It doesn't see the bottom layer because I have it turned off. Okay, on, off, on, off. So now I'm going to save this file, save as a PNG. A PNG will allow Cricut to, when it takes this image in into Cricut, Cricut will automatically make me a cut file for this. Boom. That's how easy it will be. So I'm going to save this file in Cricut as a print and cut. And it will see everything in the background as just not there. And it will automatically make the cut file for me. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so we saved this one. I don't need to save the original. I don't need the PDF. I didn't delete it. It's still there, it still lives on my computer, but I don't need it. Okay, 
this image that I'm looking at right now, the background is very white, so that should be a fairly easy selection. Um, I'm going to try, where's the color selection? Uh, let's try Magic Wand this time. Let's see. Uh, it still is kind of raggedy. I'm not real thrilled with that. Let's go back to our good old quick selection tool and just start I'm just kind of moving it around, letting it find the edge. Now here you can see it picked up the darker purple as the edge instead of the inner purple. And you can choose to make whatever design choice you want. You can choose to fix that. I'm choosing not for the sake of this tutorial. And again, it makes a selection and it stops and it waits for me. I can keep going. There we go. So I'm just moving my little mouse around, dragging it a little bit, allowing the computer to do the hard work for me. Now I've got something right in there I'll have to clean up in just a second. But can you imagine having to hand cut all of this? Um, how much that would take you to do that? That would be a lot now. It didn't select that. So I'm gonna go back in my history I'm going to clean that up just a little bit because I want the computer to learn. It, it will actually start paying attention to what you're selecting and deselecting. If you find that you're having a really, really hard time, once you've got something selected, you can go in here and take it away. Look at that. Now you already have that removed and I can keep going and I can keep adding um, to my choices. Now notice I chose not to make a whole separate layer for every single one. This one it's having a little bit of problem with and again for the sake of trying to make a fairly quick tutorial I'm just not going to worry about that one too much right now. Um, it all depends upon how much time you want to spend. I'm pretty happy with that. I want it to click on the outside of friendship. I'm just a little bit happier with that. Let's see. I don't want that. It's not finding this edge. And it's really not finding that edge. Want it all on the outside there. So you're just going to do your best keeping the edges there. Edit, cut, let's see what it did. Good. It, it cleaned it up pretty good. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. So just again for the sake of being fast, we're thinking about taking this into our Cricut. So we're going to file, save as. We're going to save this as a PNG. And I will show you at the end of the tutorial. Oh, my timer's going off, so that means I gotta go a lot faster. I will show you at the end of the tutorial um, what that looks like. So I don't have too much more time. I don't need to save it because don't worry, the original is still there. File, save as. This one I'm just gonna save as paper. So I'm gonna go in here to my format. I just need a JPEG. The only reason I want it is a JPEG is because I need that for Lightroom. P-A-P-E-R. I try to save my papers with paper at the end. Um, it just makes it a whole lot easier. I'm going to take that one off the screen. Ooh, isn't this one pretty? File save as. We're going to save it as paper. And I'm not changing the file name too much. I'm just adding an extension. So it all kind of stays in the same um, category. So if I need to find something within that design collection, I didn't change it too much. I thought those were footballs when it first opened on the screen. I was like, what are footballs doing on there? It looked like little pigeons or something. Maybe they're doves, paper. So something really cute like that, I, I would definitely want to save. 
but sometimes there's just like a plain piece of purple paper. Well, I don't really need that. Okay, again, this is really cute. I would take the time to cut that out and make that a um, Cricut design file, but we're not gonna do that right now. Okay, so I did some converting. So now when I import this, and there's a button down here, it says import. I'm gonna go find those files. Here's my digital crafting. Here's my tattered lace. And you will see these other ones kind of grayed out. That means I've already imported them. It won't double import them. It's just going to show the brand new ones that we just did. And it's going to bring them all into my design program. And now I automatically have a catalog right here. See, it's labeled Tattered Lace. So everything that I have from this design set is automatically saved here. Aren't these bird papers amazing? So pretty. Um, those are just saved as JPEGs because I'm going to just print these out. Same with these digital stamps. Um, you could save these as PNG files. Excuse me. But you'd want to create a cut file um, around the flower, which would... Or, when you did the PNG, you'd want to take this white background out and just save it around the flower, which would work pretty good. But down here at the bottom, that would be really hard to create a PNG file. So this would look better just um, printed and colored and used as a border. So I'm just leaving that one in there. So now you can see that when I'm trying to find things in all of my digital graphics, because I have so many files, um, this is going to make it a lot easier. I can look by category. Um, I can also tag things just as paper and create separate subsets that are just paper. Uh, but with these digital design sets, I find that the paper and the, you know, little ephemera graphic files, cut out, cut aparts that go with it really should all stay together. So that's a little bit about organizing and converting my file. I'm going to do skip this time. I don't need Photoshop open. We're going to try to open Cricut Design Space really, really quick and show you how to import one of those PSD files. And then that will complete this tutorial. Um, if you have questions, I will do my best to answer them. You can type them in the comments. And if you want to see more of these like tech videos, let me know. Um, I will talk tech to you for a very, very long time. Um, it is what I enjoy doing. Okay, Cricut Design Space is opened. I clicked upload because I know I'm going to upload images. It also shows me my recently uploaded images. Look at the little mouse. He saved as a cut and or a print and cut. So it's actually going to print him out and cut him for me. And then look at these vintage tickets. Those are so cute. Some little flowers I've got that are in there is print and cut. Yeah. I love this thing. Okay, so I'm going to go find those files. I'm going to go back really quick just so you can see. Look at this right here, what it's telling me. It likes PNG files, which is why we saved it. It'll also do JPEG, GIF, SVG, all these others. But you can see PDF is not listed there. So that is why I had to do that. Let's find that catalog. I was in Tattered Lace. Let's find a PNG selected like one, two, three, four, five, like these images right here and make that one file and then select these and make another file. But um, these are just in here. You're seeing the blue and white background. That tells me that the white is already gone. If you don't have the white gone, you do need to select a different type of image. Um, but for this one, see, look, boom, the white background's already gone, and whatever's here is automatically going to create a cut file for me. I'm just zooming this out so you can see it, okay? I'm just going to click continue. Now, we want to save this as a print and cut because otherwise, look, I would just have circles um, with some like doily shapes around them and that's not what we want. So we definitely wanna make sure that we've clicked on this, save as a print 
then cut image, and anything that I save as a print and cut, I automatically label it over here. I'm just going to call this tattered lace, and then this is like um, birds. I'll call this spring birds. I are birds and print cut. Because when I go to search in my own personal files or tell Design Space to go search for things, I know I have so many files in print and cut. If I just type that in my subject bar, everything that I uploaded for print and cut will be there. I also tag images with um, digital stamps. So if it's, a, if it's an image that I know for sure is a digital stamp, I will save it like that. So there's my image. I'm going to open this just so you can see what it's going to do. It will take it a minute because that image is huge, 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 which that means it's quality. You can see how large it imported. I'm going to go all the way. I'm just going to shrink it down to 8 by 5. There we go. So if I went in to make it, you will see that it will tell me that I'm going to need to print and cut this image. This is how it's going to lay it out on my printer sheet of paper, and now it wants to send it to my printer. Okay, I'm just going to back out of that because I don't need to do that. But you can, isn't that easy? I didn't have to create a separate cut file. I just turned it into a PNG. And then if I want to... I G I T A L S T A M P. It should find my digital stamps, but I've noticed since they've changed the upload of their program, they're very heavy on their own content versus mine. See, mine say uploaded. So these are everything that's tagged uploaded, obviously not that one, that I have uploaded and called it a digital stamp. So when I go to insert this one, I'll just put it right here. I'm going to just hide this. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to tell my machine to just make it. Look at that. It's going to print this out on a sheet of paper. I can do a whole bunch of these at once. Watch. I just change the quantity, and it'll print out these little tags for me and cut them out. That is so cool. All right. Well, thanks for watching this episode of today's Elaine's Crafty Downloads, and I hope you learned something, and let me know if you have any computer questions. All right. We'll see you in the next video.